Hey, I'm Todd Tucky from TNT Amusements, and I sell pinball machines. And I am at a fantastic show in Massachusetts called Pintastic. And we're here with the Sci-Fi Journal covering this show extensively. We got a lot of videos for you to watch, and you better watch them or else. Welcome to Sci-Fi Journal, presented by the members of the Rhode Island Science Fiction Club. This show is for August 2017. I'm Mark Morriso. And I'm Jay Kingston. And we are with our cameraman extraordinaire, Adam Tuckman, and the three of us are at Kineticon 2017 at the Hartford Convention Center. Yeah, right there. James Inzi and Calvin Watts III are at another convention they're at Pintastic 2017 in Massachusetts right absolutely so we're gonna give you coverage from both conventions for this particular show it's gonna be an awesome show Jay we've been coming here for quite a few years now to Connecticut yeah we've been coming here for at least six years and it just gets better and better we've been building up a fan base here at the convention believe it or not and every year you never know what to expect so I'm looking forward to some real good surprises for us and for you. Yep, so this should be a lot of fun. So we hope to bring you interviews with fans, hopefully some artists and some vendors, and we'll check it out. And people up in Massachusetts at Pintastic are going to give you some awesome stuff too. So let's check it out. And as always, we've got a lot of uh, different movie clips for you for this month. And we've got some family films, we've got some science fiction films, we've even got a couple of surprises to throw in at you. So, let's take it away with our first science fiction film. Let's see some bean footage. Senate committee will now hear from Jacob Lawson, Climate ISS Chief Coordinator. May the record reflect that he was nearly one hour late. Yeah, sorry about that. I literally had to fly in from outer space. Thanks to a system of satellites, natural disasters have become a thing of the past. We can control our weather. Mr. President. One of our thermospheric satellites malfunctioned over Afghanistan. So your proposal is what? We shut down all satellites. I don't need to remind all of you how many people died from catastrophic climate conditions. Make sure there's no further incidents. Are you going back up to space? I'm coming back. I promise. Have a safe trip, sir. Just don't touch anything. Main engine start. This is Mr. Jake Lawson. The Jake Lawson? You look much older than I would have thought. I, I mean, you, you look good. Am I getting fired? My access has been blocked. So satellite has a bad comm, that happens. Not a satellite, all of them. This wasn't a malfunction. It was intentional. There's potential for catastrophic weather events on a global scale. A geostorm. We have to shut the system down. The only one who has the kill coats is the president. I need your help. You're soliciting a secret service agent. Seriously? We're kidnapping the president in a self-driving cab. Jake, if you can't stop it, no one can.
realize you're committing treason. Oh, yeah, I kidnapped the president. I've stolen state secrets. Yeah, anything I'm forgetting, honey? Honey. Hold on! Marry her. Well, I don't know about you, but that looks pretty cool. It looks pretty wicked, awesome, cool, and groovy. Yes. Absolutely. And now let's move on to one of our family films. This one, we wouldn't recommend it if we didn't think it was good for the whole family. So let's take a look at that beautiful bean footage. What if we are here for a reason? What if we are a part of something truly divine? Imagine 91 billion light years traveled like that. Sweet dreams are made of this. Your father has accomplished something extraordinary. Also dangerous. He's trapped by a darkness that's actively spreading throughout the universe. And the only one who can stop it is you, the warrior. I'll try. You're going to be tested every step of the way. Trust nothing. Darling, time for dinner. Are you lost? The only thing faster than light is the darkness. You have a lot of stinky footage this month. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. especially with the beautiful bean footage. I know. Definitely. That's what I meant. But what do you think? You think that would be good for families or yeah, what? Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Definitely. And trying to round things out, let's throw in something from the world of fantasy, shall we? This one looks really interesting, and it's coming out later this year. So let's take a look at that footage. Oh, isn't a fun group? Welcome to detention. Spencer, Bethany, Fridge, Martha. You're all here for a reason. Hey, person walking. You should be thinking about who you are and who you want to be. You'll have plenty of time to figure that out while you're cleaning out the basement. Are you gonna help or are you too pretty? I'm too pretty. Yo, what's this? A game for those who seek to find a way to leave their world behind. Jumanji. You pick a character and you're that person in the game. Which one do I pick? I don't think it matters that much. Moose Finbar. Sounds like a badass. I'll be the curvy genius. Dr. Smolder Bravestone. I guess I'm Ruby Roundhouse. Where's the rest of me? Oh my god. Fridge? Yeah, I'm Fridge. Who are you? It's me, Spencer. Who is she? Martha? Why am I wearing half a shirt and short shorts in the jungle? I think we got sucked into Jumanji and we become the avatars we chose. So that means Bethany? Oh, wait, Bethany? Don't look at it! <laughs> I'm an overweight middle-aged man. Well, I don't have my Claritin, and all I see around here is Paula. Well, I don't have a top two feet of my body. Damn, that is a man right there. Don't cry, don't cry. Don't cry, it's gonna be okay. Welcome to the jungle. This is a video game, which means we all have special skills. What am I running so close? That was so intense. I like Kent even with this place. Watch your step. 
step in here. Maybe we're all in a coma. What? That old game machine must have elected you to us and now we're all... Oh my god! You better get in there and save her. I'm not gonna get in there. You get in there. Okay, I got a backpack on. You don't get in water with a backpack. Everybody knows that. And last but not least, we've got a general sci-fi fantasy flick that's gonna, well, I think it's gonna do pretty good at the box office. If I were wearing socks, it would rock them off. Yeah, there you, there you go. So let's take a look at that beautiful bean footage. you said what that last part I didn't catch it well I, I, I didn't say anything what do you mean I didn't well, I, I said I'll be waiting and then I stopped talking dad the Lloyd that's right your son and it's Lloyd no L L O Y D I named you you ruined my life Pfft. that's not true I haven't even been a part of your life how could I ruin it I wasn't even there baby now we got bad luck. you know what you Taking the Salomo to form the secret ninja force. Are you ready to risk your life for Ninjago? Yes, I am on it. Ah, maybe. Garmadon! Garmadon! Run! I'm stuck! I know you want me to save myself, so I'll go now. I promise I'll never forget you! I didn't ask you to promise that! Come back! Hello? Who is this? Lloyd Garmadon, your son. Oh, I must have butt dialed you. <sighs> Lad, run, it's okay, Lloyd. Nobody's parents are perfect. I mean, my mom is weird and collects seashells. Your dad levels cities and attacks innocent people. So, they've all got their quirks, you know? And that is all we've got for sci-fi popcorn previews for this month. And now, over to Mark with Tube News. Mark, take it away. Tube News for August 2017. I brought my pop here. Here. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, first we have some sad news. Last month in July, Joan Lee, the wife of comic book legend Stan Lee, died on July 6, 2017. She was 93 years old. That's sad. Yeah, God bless her. The Lees were married in 1947, and they have two children. And Joan Lee herself was an author. She wrote the novel The Pleasure Palace in 1987. So very sad news for the Lee family. Our hearts, uh, hearts go out to the Lees, and um, God bless. Absolutely. Okay, next up, horror movie director John Carpenter has been working on a few TV projects since 2015, and he's announced the first up is going to be an anthology series for the Sci-Fi Channel called Tales for a Halloween Night. And it's by John Carpenter, so it should be really cool. There's no other further information about who's been cast or who's going to be directing or plots or anything like that, but we know that whatever it's done by John Carpenter, if it's horror, it's going to be wicked awesome. It sounds promising. It really does. Yep. So look forward to that stuff. 
the Doctor Who Christmas special coming up in 2017 will not only feature the regeneration of Peter Capaldi, his doctor, but the first doctor, this time played by David Bradley. He was in that uh, TV special that was talking about the during the 50th anniversary of the Doctor, he did that special about the first Doctor and how the show was created and so forth. Right, absolutely. Okay. Did such an awesome job, they brought him back to play William Hartnell's role as the first Doctor. So the first Doctor and the current Doctor are going to be meeting for this year's Christmas special. There's also rumor that Jenna Coleman's character, Clara, will be making an appearance too. Really? Well, I can't uh, wait for that to happen. Well, they always say um, most of the time when a doctor regenerates, he gets visited by his past companions because that happened for Matt Smith, too. Yep. It did. With Rose and with uh, Amy, oh, Pond. Amy Pond and yeah. with, um, I can't think of who else, the, uh, the uh, African-American girl right. there. Yeah. Um, I know you're talking about. Yeah, so... She'll probably be coming back for an appearance during the, hey, the Christmas I'm saying African-American. She's British. She's British. Nah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, we, you know what we mean. All right. You know what we're talking about. Right. So Clara might be making an appearance. Too. Yes. Okay. So that'll be cool. I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah. The only bad news is Peter will be leaving as a doctor because I've enjoyed his three years. I'm going to miss him because he was such an angry doctor. Yeah. And he was, he was a no-nonsense doctor. Yeah. And just the fact that he's been around for all those years, you learn so much that you don't put up with a lot of crap from anybody. Right. And this is just the way he played the part, and it was perfect. Yeah, he did a really awesome job. There was rumors that there was uh, a British actress in line to take over the role as a female doctor. But then that was quickly nixed. So bottom line, as of this taping, we still have no idea who the next doctor is going to be, male or female or otherwise. We probably won't find out till closer to October, November, because the BBC has a habit of making a big to-do out of who the next doctor is going to be. Right, and we had uh, in this last episode that they just showed, we had Missy. Yes. And we had um, the master. Yes, the master. Yeah. So. Who knows, if you can have two doctors, why not two masters? Right, okay. So we'll see what happens with that. All right, August TV, things to watch out for. Here we go, Jay, are you ready? I'm ready. Sharknado 5 is gonna be Saturday, August oh. 5th. 8, 8 p.m. on Sci-Fi Channel. The reason I watch Sharknado is because I always like to see which B, C, or D so-called artist or celebrity is gonna bite it during yeah. the program. Ah, bite it! Ah. Ah. See what I did? Yeah. So that should be a lot of fun. My wife's going to make me watch that. Yeah, I, like, I love it. I can, I'll, I'll just watch it once, just to say I get it out of my system, and then we'll wait for, for Sharknado 6. I wonder if they pay those actors by union scale. Oh, I oh. get it. I know. So it doesn't take a bite out ah. of their budget. <laughs> they might make at least, it, at least a fin. Oh. <laughs> Adam, tell us to stop anytime. <laughs> Okay, moving on quickly. Marvel's The Defenders begins August 18th, starts streaming on Netflix. Netflix, thank goodness for Netflix. They are bringing us more Marvel titles and properties than you can shake a stick at, and they're doing a great job. If I had a shit, if I had a shick, if I had a stick, if I'd, you had I'd, a shick, shake it, I'd stake it. Shake it, yeah. <laughs> I'd stake my stick. Oh my goodness, it's been a long day. All right, and then The Last Ship, August 20th, 8 p.m. on TNT Season 3 for that program. Okay. Okay, good show. All right. Yep. And then last but not least, remember TempleCon? Oh, Gaming convention I remember TempleCon. Okay, well, um, used to run in February. Last year, 2016, they changed it to August. This year, they've decided, it looks like there's not going to be any more TempleCon. What the organizers are going to do is they're going to organize smaller events uh, sometime during 2017, 2018. So TempleCon as we know it is no longer exists. It's a shame too because I think probably this is, this is one of those logistical errors that they made that by switching it from February to the August date, it was just jammed in with too many other things and too many people on vacation. And I mean, February was dead 
and it gave people something to do and they just they they pulled the plug on themselves unfortunately yeah on the downside in february it was tough competing for a parking space with all the snowbanks yes that was kind of pain in the butt um, it was yeah. but it was still a great convention i mean we could go there and and we met a lot of great people we had a lot of fun we yeah. did some great panels so yeah we've made a lot of good contacts with uh Temple-Con folks over the years too yeah. so we're hoping that Temple-Con folks if you're seeing this whatever event that you have coming up in, in the next few months please get in touch with us because we would love to cover whatever you guys are doing to, to replace Temple Con. That'll you guys were always great to us and we appreciate it. And now we're going to be great to you, yes. All right, so, and by the way, my first introduction to Steampunk was going to Temple Con convention. Really? Yeah, because I had heard about it but never really been exposed to that much of it, but there's a lot of Steampunk at, at Oh, at my Con, first so introduction to, the, to Steampunk was meeting Dave Dietrich back when he was doing Space 1889. Oh, all right. The uh, old RPG. Yep. So, that was a long time ago. <laughs> that's right. Okay, all right. So that's it for this edition of Tube News. Let's move on. Hey, maybe the fantastic guys have some stuff. Yeah, all right. maybe. James and Calvin, what do you got for us? Hey, it's James. I'm at Pintastic New England with Calvin, and I'm going to do my anime news segment, Anime Daisuke. Right, so to start off with, uh, Gainax is going to produce three anime movies uh, based on works by Leiji Matsumoto called Zero Century Emeraldus, Zero Century Herlock, and Zero Century Meiteru. Um, it's produced, uh, it should be out 2020, 2023, and 2026. Uh, of course, uh, they're all part of Leiji Matsumoto's universe, uh, Captain Harlock and Queen Emeraldus, um, you know, space pirates, and Meiteru from Ginga Tetsudo 39. So uh, looking forward to seeing new Leiji Matsumoto movies, you know, because I love that universe, uh, Captain Harlock. And then uh, next, uh, Netflix has got some new animes coming, uh, Children of the Whales, and Castlevania. Castlevania is based on a video game from NES. Uh, and Children of the Whales is a story uh, where instead of an ocean, they have s like a sand, a sea of sand. And these people travel on a, like a sand boat or something. And they wind up finding this old one with a, a young girl um, in it. Next, uh, hey, there's going to be some live action movies too coming out. Anime, uh, based on anime, uh, there's live action Bleach. Uh, there's going to be a couple of those coming. And Tokyo Ghoul, which is right now on Toonami, uh, they're going to make a live-action Tokyo Ghoul, which is pretty gruesome, bloody sh anime uh, about ghouls that eat people. But uh, this one kid, he's somehow half ghoul, half human, and he's sort of caught in between. Uh, let's see. There'll be a, uh, a movie coming out in the fall or in 2018 uh, called Haikara-san go, uh, Haikara ga Toru. Uh, it'll be in the US. Um, looking forward to seeing something like that. You know, it's a brand new film that looks interesting. Um, and let's see, coming out, Fooly Cooly. Those of you who are fans of Fooly Cooly, it was just a very short uh, six episode anime, uh, but Cartoon Network and Toonami are producing a second and third season both six episodes each of Fooly Cooly, F-L-C-L, numbers two and three. And so look for those coming. They just uh, put out a preview of uh, the first one uh, and some art sketches. Uh, on Toonami, end of July, so this will be the August show, um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure season, Stardust Crusaders, is coming. So they've had the first two seasons of uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventures. Now we're going to be f uh, following Jotaro, um, uh, Stardust Crusaders, in this uh, new series. And then uh, Iron, uh, Noble Suit Gundam Iron Blooded Orphan Season 2 is going to be in October on Toonami. So, you know, it just came out too this past uh, year. 
Um, and you can watch it online on various places, but uh, Toonami will have it season two in October. So that's it for anime news for this month. Um, you know, check out all the interviews we got going here, uh, both the guys at Kineticon and us here at Fantastic. So on with the show. <laughs> So, we are here at Pintastic New England 2017, Sturbridge, Massachusetts, at the Sturbridge Host Hotel. I am Calvin Watts, and this is going to be a really fun time. I always look forward to covering Pintastic. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun, hoping to speak with a bunch of people, play some games, have a really good time. So, let's go check it out. Well, I remember this guy. You should remember this guy because he's one of the more colorful people that we have had on Sci-Fi Journal. This is Ben T. Matchstick. Oh my God! You got it. That was Did I? Good. Yeah, See, ben T. so so I'm gonna keep it up because I can screw up and it'll be okay. Yeah, it's not a flaw. Uh, it's a feature. From Cardboard Tech Institute, and they do the Low Tech Pinball 3000. How you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing great. Pinbox 3000 back for the third year. Quite proud to be, you know, in this arena for three years, and it's nice to see old friends, finally, and people who've supported us over the three years. It's been great. Yeah, when I first interviewed got you guys a couple of years ago, you were just working on your first Kickstarter. You were in the middle of it, and you were like a last-minute addition to Pintastic, and you seemed to do pretty well. Since that time, your Kickstarter succeeded very, very well, and now you're on Virgin 2. Talk a little bit about what your, is going on with your company and how things are going for you guys. Virgin 2, we did a Kickstarter we raised over uh, $100,000 to get the new dies made, and so now we're, we're optimized for production, so we can go into large-scale production. And that first run we did was 7,000 units, and we've almost sold out, so we're down to about 1,000 left. Our international sales have been awesome. We have finally got distribution in Canada, Australia, Japan, and the EU is going to produce them for their own country, and we're going to get royalties from that, so that's great. It's going to be cardboard pinball worldwide soon. That is really awesome. So, so for those of you who have not seen this interview before, why don't you talk a little bit about exactly what Pinbox is all about yes. and how it works. Pinbox 3000 is a do-it-yourself cardboard tabletop pinball machine. Um, it's $50, $49.95. You can get it at pinbox3000.com. You put it together, 12 sheets of cardboard, 39 pieces. It takes an hour to assemble. The assembly video is very casual and fun. There's also YouTube videos that inspire you to design your own playboards. The playboards are interchangeable, so you get two with each game. Um, this version includes some extra shapes, so you can get like a classic kind of EM feel uh, play game right out of the box. But ideally, you put your own theme on it, your own style, your own flavor, whatever, whatever you want to do. Uh, post it on YouTube or Instagram or Facebook, and we'd love to share it with our community. And we try to get more pinball designers in the world. Uh, we bring them into schools, you know, so if you're an educator and you want to bring pinball in your classroom, this is a great avenue to do it. Uh, it's our, your first hackable device. You know, cardboard is very hackable. You could add electronics. We've got an electronics kit that we're working on right now. We're beta testing a bunch of different ideas. Um, and that should come out next year. So yeah, we've, we've got all kinds of ideas. Of course, we come to these shows and we see everything that people are doing. And we see all the old games too. And we're like, all this is figured out for us. We just have to retrofit it, you know, <laughs> and build it into cardboard and out of paper clips and rubber bands. And, uh, and a lot of times it's a lot simpler the way we do it. Um, but yeah, we get to talk to all the pinheads and they just, you know, they, we, get, we get a lot of ideas and uh, we get a lot of hope for the pinball community because a lot of the kids in the world uh, haven't ever seen a pinball machine or played it. So this is a great introduction for them. They approach it as, as a designer, which is kind of awesome, you know. It gives you hope for like, maybe there'll be, maybe pinball will come back in this other way where, you know, kids will start designing games for us and then maybe they'll graduate to work for Stern or Jersey Jack or one of these other outfits you know and they cut their chops on, cut their chops on the cardboard <laughs> absolutely and it, it, you can notice if you look at some of the play fields it's definitely a step up from like your version one now you have so, some play fields that have ramps and yeah. targets and and it's like it's really 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 cool so uh, website for the people that want to go and check it out look at uh, look at this isn't this awesome this is incredible yeah so this is the first in our game changer series we have three boards that are coming out and this is designed by James Kochalka, and it's got uh, the mouth actually goes into the battle mode. So when you link two games back to back, you can pass the marbles between. 
So this is a good battle mode ready game. Um, yeah, so these are going to be designed by the fall, and we'll have three designs. Uh, two other ones, one by Ghost Shrimp, who did the background art for Adventure Time. That's going to be called Swamp Quest. Uh, and Monster Sweets, a kind of monster and uh, bakery theme. Um, yeah, so pinbox3000.com. Uh, go there and find your cardboard tech pinball machine. Okay, Ben, thank you very, very much. Always a pleasure, and yeah. we will see you. Keep rocking. See ya. Okay, so Pintastic 2017, and I'm with Jersey Jack Warneri. It always seems like I get to interview him every year and get to talk to him, and that's because Jersey Jack is one of the nicest, most personal guys in this business that you get the chance to talk to. And he has always taken the time to speak with us and, and to speak with me, and I, I appreciate it very much. So Jersey, how you doing? I'm good, Calvin. How you doing? I am doing fine. So the last time I talked to you, uh, we were talking about you were working on your third table. You couldn't really talk about it that much, except uh, that you said that Pat Lawler was, had a big hand in designing it. So now we know it's just been released, and it's what you have in your shirt called Dialed In. And it is a really, really cool table. There's a lot of stuff going on. Uh, I like the fact that there's a lot of homages to his previous work that he, you know his tables and whatnot and it's really really cool so why don't you talk a little bit about your latest product well so here's a game it's not a uh, it's not a license we basically created our own license and um, you know it's been a really long time since Pat and the team uh, were able to do something like that and you know uh, uh, when you have a license you have uh, a movie to work off of or some other kind of script in this case, you have um, a blank slate. So as exciting as it is, um, it could be a little intimidating because uh, you need to set, well, where do we start? Where's the middle? Where's the end? What's the storyline? So I think it was very exciting. I think the team did a great job. And uh, the response to the game has been amazing. Everybody loves the game. Everybody loves the game. People were walking out of here with games they bought today. Uh, they took delivery of games they bought, they ordered games, they got on the pre-order line. I didn't hear one comment that was not less than a just amazing game. I mean, people said to me things like, it's the greatest game i played in like 25 years, you know, so it's great. You can't ask for more than that. Plus, the guys in the tournament, they had it in the tournament, so we had three of them here. One was in the tournament. The guys were just saying, Jack, no ball stuck, no, no downtime. Nothing happened with the game. The game worked flawlessly. It was just perfect. That's that's a Jersey Jack pinball machine. Something that works flawlessly. Really, really, very proud of it. Yeah, and that's really a testament to your company and, and your quality control and, and, and how you do stuff. All three of your machines, and there's a lot of stuff going on. Um, and and, and uh, other people, I won't name names, uh, you know, I, I've seen to, I don't want to say imitate, but imitate, you know, kind of like, you know, you, you've set the trail and now that they're kind of following that. Um, and But still, still, y y it, it is just really great what you've been able to accomplish in just a, a few short years. Um, I appreciate that. And on behalf of the whole team, you know, we accept that thank you from everybody. Um, you know, when you really set the bar high and you put a target up here, I if you miss it, you're still here, right? So uh, if you're really aiming low and you miss it, you're not going to create something spectacular. I mean, you have to have the passion for it and you have to have the follow through and you have to have the dedication. And we have that. We have a lot of people that love pinball and um, we're focused on creating great products. and. We really appreciate that the people that play the games uh, recognize that. So it's wonderful. You know, it's really cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, we've talked about this before, but as you can see very well this year, Pintastic has been a really big success. As a, a, a lot of people, is, is definitely more people than they were here last year. And you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of people. I had a really long interview with Todd Tucky earlier today. Really, really awesome gentleman. And he had nothing but the highest praise for you. And we were talking about, you know, while it's never going to go back to its heyday of like the, the, the 70s and 80s, uh, the fact that, you know, so many more people, there's like a new generation coming in and, and there are so many new people out there that are discovering pinball for the first time. And a lot of that is due to you, really. Well, you know, I, I appreciate that. I think everybody plays a role. Um, yes. You know, some of the things that we 
that we did on this game, you know, I, I wanted to put a camera on a pinball machine since the 1970s. Um, when I had games on location, I said, wouldn't it be cool if I could get, um, you know, a Polaroid camera, put it on the top of the game, and it took your picture when you had a high score. So instead, you know, this time around, uh, we're able to put a, an amazing camera, have some facial recognition software, and it takes selfies. People, especially, I mean, everybody lose their mind, but young people, they look at that and they're like, wow, I could connect to that. You know, before you had a pinball machine that had one static image on the back box, it's not exciting, it wasn't really, you know, what did that do? And now you can download an app from, uh, from the app store and, you know, flip the flippers and shoot the ball and it'll do more stuff like that. So yeah, um, young people discovering what pinball is, is the future. You know, it's not other people, which are great, rediscovering something. You know, that's wonderful. I'm not going to take them for granted, but we want to build the audience, and that's what I feel we're doing with our games. It's very exciting. So probably the most uh, look forward to Pinball Machine that was at the show was the just newly released Star Wars table by Stern. It was extremely busy for the entire night. While we were filming here at Fantastic, I really didn't get a chance to get to it with the camera however I did get a chance to play it late last night and so you're seeing some footage of that now but the game I believe is designed by Steve Ritchie it plays fast I, I know that the stern tables generally play fast but this is like lightning fast it is a lot of fun um, as you can see yeah it's based on like the original Star Wars theme so there's like a, a lot of like original Star Wars stuff going on the LCD screen that they have in the background is a, there's a lot of different modes, a lot of different things that you can do, and it looks like and and I can attest it's a lot of fun. Okay, are we, are, are we on? I think so. We, wait, wait, wait a minute. How do I look? You look marvelous. Okay, now we're ready. N now, now we can start. Now we can start. All right. So for those of you who have been watching my segment for what as, as, long, bleh, as long as you have and you, every once in a while you know that I geek out so we're at Pintastic 2017 and I'm gonna try very hard not to geek out but I am I am I am geeking out right now with me is the legendary Todd Tucky from TNT Amusements now if you don't know who Todd Tucky is you really should if you go on YouTube look up TNT Amusements he uh, owns an amusement place in Pennsylvania, correct? Mm -hmm. um, so he buys and sells video games and arcades, and he makes YouTube videos where he talks about how he restores these beautiful machines, and he, and he has a lot of fun like making these. And these videos are, are really cool, really fun to watch, and I, I've been a fan of his for a, a number of years now. And when I found out he was coming to Fantastic, I thought he was going to come last year, and I was like really geek, but then he didn't show up. But now he's here this year, and I so now I I'm really glad. I didn't know about it last year. And he actually said that he would interview, so here I am. Sure. So, Todd, welcome. How are you? Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure. And we make these videos. Uh, Frank is my film man. He does the filming. We make them as we go. Right, Frank? We make them as we kind of make them up as we go along. But we have a lot of fun with them. And we add stuff to them and we make them enjoyable. And we try to, we try to make exposed pinball machines and arcade video games to the public to try to introduce the younger generation to the product so they can see how much fun it can be if they understand how to play it. Because most people walk up to a pinball machine and have no idea what's going on. They see all these flashing lights, and they don't realize that somebody has actually sat down and written a, a, a story, like a movie. Mm -hmm. And you can hit targets that are flashing and put the movie together yourself. And every time you play a pinball machine, it's different. Every time you play a game, the, res the end results can be different. That's what makes it so neat. The newer games, you can go into different modes, and you'll see footage on the, the display or TV screen. They, some of them, the newer ones now have screens that you may never have seen before, and you've had the game in your house for five years, or five days, or 10 weeks, or whatever. So it's really neat. There's so much programming in them. And now, if people know about it, they may want to start playing these on a regular basis. Now, do you play pinball? I do. Um, I'm not like hardcore, but I've been a pinball fan for like a, a really long time. I'm, I'm 
old, well, older. So I grew up in the heyday of like the arcades. So I remember going to the arcades. So, so you're telling me you're a pinball connoisseur? Kind of, sorta. See, look at the seat. Now I'm going to do the interview. I'm just. <laughs> So, no, I, I love having fun this I am having loads of fun. We have, th this show, we have done so much stuff. We, d you, we did the uh, auction. Yep. We had a lot of fun at the auction. All these great new games. This place is packed with players and fans who love pinball. They're, they're, le they're seeing games they've never seen before. Like Big Bang Bar, a really interesting Capcom game that I happen to think is the best pinball machine ever made. Now I may I may have to change my mind when I play dialed in, who knows? But I'm willing to change. See, with pinball and with arcade video games, you have to be flexible. There's a there's a, a famous two words that somebody said years ago: things change. So you have to look go into something with a fresh look, and maybe the, the game you thought was the greatest game on earth, maybe that'll get replaced by something else. And it does. It happens. So. And, and that's and coming to a show like this, you can be exposed to games you will never probably see again unless you start hunting for them. Yeah. I have people coming in and they're looking, they have these lists and they're looking for a specific game. And they may, they may only have made 500. And out of the 500 they made 30 years ago, maybe only 20 are left in the whole world. And maybe at a pinball show, they're all over the, all over the country. Yep. Pinball shows are everywhere. Now on the East Coast, we have this show. And in Allentown, there's the Pin Fest. It's always held the first weekend of May. And in York, Pennsylvania, that's near historic Lancaster. So you can go to Lancaster and see all the Amish people Amish country, yeah. have a yeah. wonderful time. And boy, is the food good down there. And you can go to the pinball show. It's always held in October. It may be the first week and second weekend. That weekend's flexible. It's when they can open up the fairgrounds that they book. So there's three great East Coast shows that you can go to, but then there's Central United States, there's uh, Southern United States areas, and of course there's tons of shows in California right. uh, that you can actually see and expose yourself to this classic entertainment. And uh, although my games are the best. <laughs> so you've now TNT has been in, in business. I want to say uh, 38 years. Do I have that right? He's done his, re He's done his research. So, um, so I know you've been doing this for a number of years, but it, you've only been, how, what got you into producing videos to put up on YouTube uh, for like your restoration work and, and how do you decide to get into that? Well, believe it or not, somebody actually asked me that at this show and I had to think about it. Originally, I thought it was Frank, Frank Lindemuth, who works for me. And he said, no, no, it wasn't me. One of the other fellows that works for me, Ryan Howe, who's now a Philadelphia cop. Uh, he was working for me part-time for years. He said, you ought to put this stuff up on YouTube. And I said, well, I guess I could. And he actually posted our first 10 videos with his Mac computer. So he's responsible for putting me up. And then we got calls from people to show. And I said, wait a minute. This is really neat. YouTube, originally, I was on TV. I actually not only pioneered the cheap infomercial, I actually got asked of the broadcast pioneers of Philadelphia who pioneer certain elements. I produced the cheapest infomercial in America, a cost of $500, and it ran continuously every night for 12 years. Wow. Local, local broadcast. I bought this really cheap time. I was the cheap guy. I took the slots that nobody bought. But people remember me from these early morning I would book like midnight, 1 a.m. And if you're in the middle of the night, you could wake up and hear my voice. And I remember I was at a diner once in a booth and the diner people next to us came over and says, I recognize that laugh. Late night person watching my infomercial. So that's what started all. We have those infomercials up on the channel too. So you can actually see what started my YouTube career basically. And now we, we just posted uh, video number 1285 I've numbered them now because then I can tell somebody well if you want to see this machine just go to video 762 and it's also in 548 and then it's easy to find hi Casey hi now you all with what company I'm with great American Gothic here at Kineticon this weekend all right and tell me a little bit about 
custom fangs and all that other cool stuff. Um, so here we make custom vampire fangs. They're made of professional grade materials, um, so they will last you forever. They're custom fit to your mouth. They slide in and out. It kind of makes sense that they last for you forever since you're supposed Absolutely. to live forever. Absolutely. Gotcha. We even make you sign a certificate of death to become one of the damned. Seriously? Absolutely. That's cool. All in right. addition to the fangs, we also have all kinds of custom made goblets, flasks, drinking horns, any kind of drinking vessel that you could ever want. Okay, cool. Yeah. And how long have you been with this company? Oh, I've been with them for, I think, like. Oh goodness, six or seven years at this point. Oh nice. Yeah, Good. absolutely. Now tell me a little bit, I know you're also a member of the False Face Society. I am a member of the False Face Society. I generally cosplay as Catwoman, though you can find me as Poison Ivy, you can find me as Black Widow. Oh goodness, I've done a couple of others. Okay, and yeah. how'd you get started in cosplay? Um, to be honest, I dated a huge nerd. <laughs> I dated Ray Mitchell of False Face Society, oh, okay. who's our Batman, yeah, and know, uh, right? exactly, from there, it just kind of snowballed. Okay. Yeah. Good. All right. Yeah. So thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. So what's, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Is there a website or something for the company you can put Um. On? Yeah. So you can go to greatamericangothic.com. Um, we also have an Instagram and a Facebook. Okay. Check us out there. Our next con is going to be uh, Gen Con, and then we'll be at New York Comic Con after that, and then Rhode Island Comic Con in November. All right. So we'll see you at Rhode Island Comic Con. Excellent. See awesome. you at Rhode Island. Okay. Let's see what else is going on at Connecticut Con. Okay, Jay here at the booth for Vortex Man, a new comic that's out, and I'm with the creator, and his name is? Isaac Schwecki. Isaac, how nice to meet you. Pleasure meeting you. Okay, tell us a little bit about Vortex Man, what made you think about him, and uh, what inspired him, and all the background info. All right, thanks. Well. We have become a disposable society, and it's really been bothering me in the last several years as I have a child, and I look at everything that we consume, and, and everything we consume or, or either eat or use in a, in a wireless device, we have to do something with it, and it's made out of plastic. And what happens to that product? It, a lot of times it doesn't get recycled. Um, people are not aware of what's happening around the, wor around the world with their recycling efforts, and the problem is, is things are ending up in the ocean. And people don't understand that, you know, the ocean is so big, but there's so much stuff that's in it that we have caused this problem to happen. By the year, by the year 2020, for every two ton of fish, there's going to be only there's going to be one ton of, pl of uh, plastic. And for the year 2052, there's going to be only two ton of plastic and only one ton of fish. So that's a problem. People uh, smoke a cigarette, and throw it out the window, it goes down a water waves, and ends up in the ocean. So we have a character for that. We have a character for fracking. We have a character for GMO. We have a character for glass ghosts. So each year on Earth Day, we um, launch a new edition. Uh, our first one was Scorched Earth in 2015. Scorched Earth 2, because it's one out of five series, was launched in Earth Day 2016. And this year in 2017 was Origin Story. And the Origin Story takes place in the Pacific Patch. So a lot of people don't know about the Pacific Patch, but uh, Pacific Patch is near Midway Island. And there's a whole story behind three ex-Navy SEALs. They're on their way to, to do a top secret mission. Uh, and then something goes sour, and now it's a whole government experimental with their bodies and so forth. So um, that's it's just bringing awareness to what we're doing and the impact. So we, again, cover everything. Our, our um, second edition of Scorched Earth takes place in Guangdong, China, which is one of the most polluted e-waste recyclers in the world. And people don't understand, well, I recycle. And then they go and, they sh and that product goes to a company and it ships it overseas. Well, the conditions overseas are so bad that there's kids working in these mercury pools that they're just above ground, that it's affecting the air because they're burning the plastic so they can get to the copper. And it's, in fa it's, it's really, it's just becoming such a hazards we're destroying the earth everyone's worried about war 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 people don't realize by buying a 24 pack of water or you're buying a tide detergent or you're buying uh, a, a yogurt what's it made what, where does it go it goes into a plastic container and we are just destroying ourselves even when we want to eat eat right and and conscious be conscious but we're not so this is what this whole program is about um, it is, um, again, it, we look at it as like the next Marvel because it's not just about 
uh, uh, space being coming from another Earth or anything. It's, it's what we're doing today that's ca causing these major problems. Well, it sounds like you've put an awful lot of thought into this. We have. I understand you've been working on it for four and a half to five years yes, now. Yes, the two, uh, we, I teamed up with uh, two ex-Marvel comic uh, artists and writers, uh, Ian Aiken and Brian Garvey. They inked for Iron Man in the uh, early 80s in, with Marvel and Vision Comics. And uh, they loved the idea. They came on board and they started to draw for us. So every month we come up with two to three characters. They're inking. By the end of this year, we'll have 100 characters total. We have from Major Compost for composting. We got Steven Seagal, which is a seagull that sits on uh, Major Compost's shoulder. Uh, he got affected by all the plastic in the Pacific Patch. We got Polymera. She's going to be released at the um, Comic Con in Boston. And backstory behind Polymera has to do with the balloons that go up in the ocean that end up into uh, the Gopa near that end up in the ocean. So it's all the impacts again of the, what we're doing in a day-to-day -day living. Uh, well that's just great. We've got your press kit. Yep. We're going to feature it on our upcoming show after after this episode. Awesome. And uh, we'll let the people out there know what's going on and yep. let everybody go see it for themselves. Yeah. And uh, we are, you can buy our comic book on Amazon. Uh, you, there's a lot of local stores in Connecticut, and by the end of this year, we'll have a distribution rights with a company that will distribute all our comics in all the major stores across the country. But we are in, international through our own self right now, and we did it within Israel, and they're selling out in Tel Aviv and, and three of the comic book stores over there. So it's really doing well. It's getting the hype is there. We want to get some celebrities behind it that are not just about the money, um, that are looking at really making an impact on the environment. 10% uh, of our proceeds go to kids for cancer. So we teamed up uh, this year and last year with Connecticut Children's Hospital. So that's the mo most important is, is about the kids. Because if we don't take care of what we're doing today, there will not be an earth for our kids for the future. Well, bless you both. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. And uh, that's it from Vortex Man at uh, 19, <laughs> excuse me, at the 2017 Kineticon back to the studio. Well, I don't know about you, Mark, but I am bushed. It has been such a busy day here at Kineticon, and the people have been great as always. And, you know, look at all the costume footage we got and all the interviews that we got. Yeah, I got a lot of pictures, a lot of stills from folks too. So, what I'll probably do is if you go to our website, uh, www.risfc.org, You'll see a lot of pictures from Kineticon that we took over the weekend. So www.risfc.org. Say it again. Did, did I say dot com? Oh no. Let me try say it again. again. www.risfc.org. I'm just saying that because they say to a re for, into uh, emphasize something into somebody, you've got to say it three times. Really? So yes. So we said it three times. So now it ought to be infused in our people's uh, brains out there. Right. And so, you got anybody that you want to say uh, particular greetings to at all? Not necessarily greetings, but I do want to say thank you to the organizers at Kineticon for allowing us to come back and shoot some footage and talk to some guests and meet some other nice press people. That's the nice thing I like about this too, is they have an awesome press room and you can mingle with other folks and trade secrets and all that stuff. Oh, I guess Alex is being called. All right. Yes, Alex is missing. Alex, I hope you come back here. Anyway. I think she fell down the rabbit hole. <laughs> oh, no, she just forgot her badge. That's what she did. Oh, yeah. all right. There she goes. Well, that's it for this month's Sci-Fi Journal, at least from Kineticon. Yeah.